Now, the pandemic measures have sort of intensified the boredom felt by people. COVID restrictions have limited our social gatherings and the kind of activities that we can do or we dare to do. And the common boredom escape path, what is it? The common boredom escape path of going overseas is also not possible nowadays. And so all day long, people stay at home or work from home remotely. And in such a way, feelings of isolation may set in very easily. But in fact, even before the COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic, we realized that it is already very easy for people to feel bored. Um, because people easily feel, you know, our life is all the same. We are revolving around the same people, the same type of activities and events. And so people tend to feel that their ordinary living lacks excitement or lacks any little thrills here and there. And a study showed that usually the sense of boredom is more common among which uh, profile of people. It's usually among the people who are younger, and I don't know why they mentioned males tend to feel bored more easily than the females. And also the unmarried, they also tend to feel bored easier. But no matter what, I believe that for all of us, at some point or another, we also get into these feelings of being bored. You know, everything is like very uninteresting to us. And so while it may seem or feel like it's very petty, it's very trivial to complain about being bored, you know, other people, you know, they have life and death matters, they have bread and butter issues to worry about. And here we are just complaining, you know, we are very bored, you know, we feel very sien. So sometimes it may feel as if this boredom is not a very um, big problem. But then if we are not careful, this boredom, boredom can also evolve into something that is very serious. And so we need to really understand the harms that can, uh, that, that, that can be caused by boredom. And so, you know, of course, uh, we don't need research to tell us if we have been bored before. But of, of course, research has also shown that uh, the sense of boredom is very much associated with negative emotions, such as what? Such as, you know, loneliness, anger. You know, sometimes people even feel angry when they are bored. I've got nothing to do, you know, I feel very, uh, I feel there's no joy, no thrill. And then people may also feel sad because of boredom or sometimes because of boredom, it may also give rise to anxiety, worries. And so, in fact, we need to really think through what happens when a person is bored. If you think about it carefully, when it happens to us or when we observe it among people around us, when a person is bored, he can become what? A very easy prey for the evil one. I mean, in the Bible, we have one very obvious example, King David. You know, one day we know that when he was very bored and then he was walking around aimlessly. The thing is aimlessly. I mean, if he's walking around uh, prayerfully in his palace, uh, maybe nothing bad will happen. But one day, this King David was just walking around very aimlessly and very free in his own palace. And then suddenly, he saw Bathsheba bathing. And as a result of that, we know what happened next. You know, he fall into adultery and murder. And I've also ever read, I'm not sure whether you all come across such reading, that um, there have been reports that mention, you know, why do people get into gambling? You know, the report actually mentioned people fall into gambling, not so much for greed, but because what? They feel very bored, uh, nothing to do, just itchy hand, you know, go and touch this or try this or get into a certain website. And then they fall into this addi addiction. I also even hear, you know, some people, they... They got into extramarital affairs. Also because of what? Also because of boredom. You know, they just they don't find anything wrong with their spouse, but they just feel, you know, their marital life is very bland, very uninteresting. And so we realize there are certain harms that boredom can bring if we are if we just let it be, you know, leave it alone. And of course, just now what I mentioned, gambling, you know, adultery, extramarital affairs, all these are sin. But if we uh, if we consider a less sinful or less serious note, we also realize, you know, when sometimes uh, we, we got bored, then what happens? We very easily get into very meaningless activities, you know, such as, you know, drama chasing, aimlessly serving the net, you know, excessive gaming or compulsive social media use. And so all these activities that I just mentioned, you know, watching drama, playing some games on the computer, uh, serving some net, all this sounds what? 
sounds very trivial, very innocent, very harmless, but they have a they have a very strong effect. They have this very cunning effect that the devil can use. And what is it? All these seemingly innocent activities that I mentioned, all this entertainment, they have this effect of dulling our spiritual senses, uh, of shrinking our spiritual appetites. You know, such that you know we start to feel you know. Uh, the Bible cannot be compared to this uh, Korean drama or this game that we are on. You know, so there are certain things that you know the devil has been cunningly, cunningly plant, planting in our lives. And if you notice, a bored person, one uh, one characteristic of a bored person is what he is very easily distracted. You know, so a very simple ding dong or, or, or for, for the for our case right now this. Dong, dong, dong sound, uh. a very a very simple ding dong you know ding dong notification from our devices whether it's your laptop whether it's your handphone whether it's whatever you know we may be in class having lessons we, we may be in a work meeting zoom meeting or we may be in the church hearing sermons or we are just uh, you know reading our bible or we are trying to prepare our heart to do quiet time or pray quietly to god suddenly we get a notification ding dong or whatever from our phone Everything just gone, you know. Our attention just got distracted. It is so easy. Just one sound, a simple notification. It is enough to distract us from all meaningful work and uh, things. And so we realize, uh, what do bored people tend to do? Bored, pe bored people, they tend to find relief from little distraction. Very little distraction is enough to amuse this bored person. If you think about the times when you feel very bored, huh, what happens? You'll be very easily satisfied with a little, for example, a YouTube video that's very funny. You know, in the, in the midst of our meeting or, you know, in the midst of listening to certain things, uh, if there is certain, certain funny, okay, I think I need to change this, okay. Just leave it, just leave it. It's just continue. Okay, so we try to dis uh, remove all signs of distraction because remember, uh, distraction is very effective to turn our attention from the important things. So a, a bored person, think about it. A bored person, uh, they will delight in the slightest distraction. Like uh, even now, if in the midst of this uh, boring sermon, if you want to get a, uh, just find some relief from boredom, what? Wow, just checking up WhatsApp, or just looking at certain social media updates from your friend, or just like I was mentioning, people like to watch funny videos online nowadays, or even an advertisement or a news article. All this is sufficient, you know, to relieve us of temporal boredom. And so, because of all this phenomenon, we see that a person who is very bored, he tends to fall into sin very easily. Just like I mentioned, you know, certain addiction like gambling or, you know, sexual sins. Or they easily accept whatever comes their way. Whatever big or small things that comes their way to, you know, relieve them temporarily from their boredom. And because... People who are bored, they are less selective or they are less guarded. So they are about, they are almost ready to embrace anything that can, you know, um, give them tempor temporal joy. And so that's why it is so difficult for us to sometimes spot the dangers of boredom. But it is indeed dangerous. So now the question we need to ask is, if boredom is so subtle and yet it is harmful, so what exactly causes boredom? Now, a lot of times when the word boredom comes to your mind, right? Many people, they will first think that, oh, a person is bored because he has nothing to do. But if you think about it closer, it is not always the case that a person is bored because he has nothing to do. Well, of course, it is true that some people, they are really bored because they really have nothing to do. But uh, there are also times when people are bored uh, when they really have many things that they are supposed to do. For example, you know, they have uh, work or study assignments that they have to hand up, or they have certain household chores that they need to maintain, or they have uh, certain church serving that they need to 
do. Or there are certain uh, people like the elderly parents or the young children that they need to look after. But the problem for with bored people is what? Is although there are so many things that they know they are required to do, they are supposed to do, they are obligated to do by duty, but yet they are just not motivated to do. They are not interested to do. So in other words, bored people, uh, they are not really not busy. In other words, they are not really idle people you know, with nothing to do. But rather, the definition for boredom is uh, they are not interested. Uh, to, a, to a bored person, nothing seems to be very important. Or rather, nothing seems to matter a lot to the bored person. You know, he just don't feel like doing anything. He's just very listless and he feels very indifferent. Probably because he cannot see any point, any purpose. You know, why am I doing housework every day? You know, why do I need to take care of people when they don't appreciate me? Or why do I need to do, go to work and do all the silly things that the boss asked me to do? You know, some, sometimes people feel bored because they just don't see any value or any purpose in their busyness. And up to a point, you know, a bored person will just wonder to himself, is this all my life? Every day I wake up, you know, I go to work, I go to school, I rush through all the boring assignments, and then I go back home, I rest a little while, I have to take care of the spouse, take care of the children, and maybe I have to do certain church serving. Then I sleep for a little while, and then the next day everything repeats itself again, and it goes on and on like forever. And so a bored person comes to this point, and if you tell me without the gospel, how can they or how can such a person not feel joyless? And so this is one reason, the disinterest that happens to this bored person. Another possible cause for boredom is one, is this overstimulation that we are experiencing in this modern generation. Uh, because if you think about it, what is the kind of world that we are living in right now? We're living in a world that propagates a kind of message. What message is that? That more is better. So, you know, when there's this message, subtle message that is going on in the society, uh, with all the media, all the people that we are in contact with, they seem to send us this subtle message, more is better. Meaning what? It's not fun enough just to have one form of fun. You need to have multiple channels of fun. Then your life is exciting. Then your life is worth it. And also, people feel, people seem to uh, silently advocate, you know, uh, if you have more friends, wow, then you are more popular. Your, your life can be happier. You have more success, more possession, then your life is more fulfilling. And so, uh, every day, if you think about it, what have uh, we been bombarded with. You know, every day, you know, when we live in this world, especially in this social media generation, we've been bombard bombarded with a lot of videos, a lot of advertisements, social media feeds, and all this, what, what do they do? But I don't know whether you realize that or not. With all this um, information and updates that, have, that has uh, been coming our way, they are actually stimulating our senses. And they are stirring out our desires. You know, sometimes you don't have certain desires for certain things. Suddenly you see your friend's Facebook or Instagram or whatever post updates. Then you realize, oh, if they have it, I also want to have it. Otherwise, my life is like very boring, very pointless. And so all these things that we are exposed to stimulate us. In fact, excessively stimulate, st stimulate us. And such that, you know, we... Uh, we are not easily contented. So if you think about it, I don't know how many of you uh, will feel very uncomfortable if you don't, do not have your handphone with you. you know, my husband tell me every time he got out of the car, he must have three things with him. One is his car key, his handphone. Oh, I don't know what is, oh, what's the third thing. I forgot. Okay, anyway, but handphone is one of them. So every time he will feel, 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 and then if he didn't find one of the three things, especially the handphone, he will immediately rush to find it back. So I, I believe this is a common phenomenon for many people nowadays. But if you think about it, why are we so uneasy when our handphone is not by our side? So much so that if you think about it, we may even feel more okay when we don't sense that God is with us. But the moment that we are aware that our handphone is not with us, wow, we get very anxious. You know, we feel like we are missing out on certain important calls or texts or certain things. And so this comes to a stage where we have become overly you know, dependent on the handphone. And why? Because 
we are always on this constant search for what? For some stimulation, for some excitement, for some purpose. And so we thought, you know, maybe the handphone and the information in the handphone can provide us, satisfy us with those things. And so there has been statistics that, you know, reflected that in 2019 and 2020, the average daily social media usage of users worldwide is about, I don't know how you compare yours with these statistics, maybe some of you is even more than 145 minutes, which you know, is about 2 hours and 25 minutes. So every day, people spend this amount of time. Maybe to some of you, this is not even enough you know, to finish your drama or finish your game or whatever. But the strange thing is, even though right now we have the privilege of having the whole world of information and entertainment in our hands, through our handphones. But the strange thing is, despite this privilege, people still feel this thing called leisure boredom. And why is it leisure boredom? Psychologists call it leisure boredom because people are having leisure time, but they know that whatever they are doing in their leisure time is just to kill time. It's just to pass time. And whatever they are doing, they are just meaningless. They know, you know, I'm watching this drama because I have nothing better to do. I'm uh, playing this game because I have no mood to do other things. These are just meaningless activities. And so, because they also realize that this is very empty. And so, after going through the very empty leisure, they still feel bored at the end of it all. But whatever the case, the chief cause, so just now I mentioned this interest over stimulation, the chief cause for boredom, especially for us believers, is because what? To be frank, we are bored because we are simply not all struck enough by God. Now, how many, how many of you, uh, when you, National Day is coming soon, right? How many of you will feel very bored when you're staring at the fireworks? Or I don't know when, what you call that, the, the, the fighter plane, uh, you know, fly through with their, or, or the parachutists, you know, perform their stunts. How many of us will feel like we, we want to yawn, you know, when we saw all those things? And how many of us we will feel like yawning when we stand in front of the Grand Canyon? I mean, how many of us will do that, right? So the thing is, usually when we are in awe with something, you won't feel bored. You know, when you're standing in front of a very spectacular scene or scenery, you will just be so captivated by it that you have no time to, be, to feel bored. But the thing is, why are we bored? Even though, you know, we have known this creator of the universe and this God. Well, maybe, perhaps, at the beginning when we first know God, we may be so touched and so moved, you know, by God and the gospel, the good news. Never have we heard that, oh, there's this God, there's a person who loves us unconditionally. Never have we heard that, you know, there's this person who can sacrifice for us with all his life and all his love. So maybe at the beginning, we may be attracted to God's promises and we are so happy that this almighty God, despite his honor, despite his glory, he is always at our side, being with us. We may be so stunned by this fact that, you know, this, this king of the universe, he just follow us, you know, everywhere we go. But our human flesh is very strange. What is it so strange about the human flesh? We lose interest and appreciation very easily with something that is very good. If, especially when that good thing becomes too familiar. And so, you know, after we become a Christian for many, many years, you know, we have been hearing repeated messages of the gospel, of the Bible, when even good things become too familiar, our human flesh starts to get bored. So the problem with us is, why are we not so happy? Why are we easily distracted, this easily bored? Because we also got easily bored with the glory of God. I mean, the glory of God is even more remarkable than fireworks. But, you know, after seeing it for a while, you know, after seeing the glory of God for a little while, we've grown so bored with it. And the thing is, we always associate our flesh with what? With sin. Now, if our flesh is attracted to sin, naturally, we will find the holy God, what? Very boring. And so, as a result of this lack of awe toward God, the natural consequence is what? We become under committed 
to God. You know, when uh, you are not interested in God, naturally, you won't commit your full attention, your whole life to God. And so, uh, when we are not strongly committed enough to something, now you think about it, when you're not strongly committed to something, then you will find it very hard for you to, to find a reason to get up in the morning, you know, to drag yourself out of bed for something that you're not very passionate or committed about. But if you contrast this uh, to, I don't know how many of you, uh, it has certain difficulty getting out of bed, you know, always need to snooze. I, I'm one of them. I need half an hour of snoozing, then I can get out of bed. But, you know, sometimes when I'm about to go for a holiday, overseas trip, I don't need any snoozing. I can just jump out of bed, immediately go and prepare and go to the airport, you know, because the holiday is waiting for me. So sometimes when our heart, there's nothing to stir us. Nothing to captivate us. You know, every day, if you go, I don't know who, which of you, jump out of bed enthusiastically to report to school, to report to work. I mean, we can jump out of bed, but maybe not enthusiastically. But if there is a reason to excite us, if there is someone to amaze us, we can do that. So our problem is when we are under-committed to Jesus, when we are not attracted sufficiently to Jesus, what naturally happens is we will breed boredom because we cannot find a reason to get excited about life. We cannot find a reason to be passionate about life when we lose interest in the creator of life. And so we need to understand that when God created humans, God didn't create humans to be bored. But God created and God designed humans to what? To be happy in the work and purpose that God has designed for us. And so for Adam, the first man, we know that God designed it in such a way that Adam, he has to work in the Garden of Eden. But it's not just about the task. God designed a person not to boredom, but by fulfilling the person's life in meaningful work, and more than that, to enjoy the lively relationship and the presence of God in the Garden of Eden. But the thing is, when this God-designed purpose and God-designed fellowship is broken down, then we realize we get into boredom time and again. So how we, re how we respond to boredom tells a lot about the state of our heart. Now, if our heart turn to sins, turn to counterfeit pleasures, turn to certain trivialities, you know, little joy here and there, meaningless things, that shows, you know, our heart is in that direction. But if we are bored and our boredom drives us to God, that speaks a lot about the state of our heart. So the thing is, if we understood that there are certain harms of boredom, what we really need to pray about is we need to pray that we have the readiness and willingness to combat boredom. The truth is, when we take our eyes off the wonder of wonders, who is God himself, naturally we will feel bored. Naturally we will become bored. So the first thing toward combating boredom is to set our hearts once again on God. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 tells us that, you know, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. So we really need to understand that what is boredom? Boredom is both a sign and an invitation. A sign of what? You know, when we feel bored, it is a sign that our life is moving in the wrong direction. Boredom is a sign that is a warning sign that you know we are actually living for ourselves when we should be living for God. And so when we feel bored, it is actually God's reminder to tell us that you know you're not created just for this life, just for this earthly life, but you're created for eternity. And so if you're created for eternity and you set your mind on earthly things, of course you will feel bored. And so you know, if, you, if you realize there's this cycle, when we are bored and we use trivial distractions, a little video, a little, a little uh, advertisement, a little entertainment, little trivialities to satisfy our boredom, what happens naturally is 
we fall into boredom again. There's this cycle. You get bored, you use little distractions, earthly distractions, then you fall into boredom again. Uh, so you realize, you know, sometimes after indulging hours and hours of uh, into dramas, into texts, into social media, you find our you find yourself stuck in boredom again after the screen, whether it's computer or handphone screens are off. Or sometimes, you know, we have been hoping for certain excitement in our life to lift ourselves out of boredom. You know, maybe we think uh, we need to strive towards a success target. Uh, once we reach there, we will feel fulfilling our life. But, you know, sometimes the thing that you're looking for, whether it's a desired outcome, whether there's someone that you really hope to win over, when you get that success, when you get that person, when you get that um, achievement, strangely, it may thrill you for a little while. But after that, you realize boredom sets in again. So what does boredom tell us? Uh, common sense will let you know. Boredom tells us something needs to change, right? So if you are bored, the first instinct that comes to your mind, okay, I'm very bored with my life. Something needs to change. But the thing is, what is the thing that has to be changed? The usual common um, human mindset is, if I'm bored, I need to change what? Uh, some people say, I need to change a spouse. I need to change a car. I need to change a house. Change of environment. You know, I, This house I've been living for 10 years. I'm sick of the environment, sick of the uh, uh, decoration. Change of environment or change job or change whatever. But the thing is, in order to truly and uh, f for a lasting while, if you want to relieve boredom, what really needs to change is not all these external things. Yes, you change a house, you change a car, you may be happy for a little while. But what really needs to be changed is our heart. And so, just like I mentioned, boredom is a sign, but it is also an invitation. Invitation to do what? Invitation by God, for us to re-encounter him, to once again stand in awe, to be awed by him. Actually, God quietens a lot of the distractions that we have during pre-pandemic times. You know, a lot of things that we have been enjoying and we are so used to during um, before the COVID, God quietly takes them away. And why is he doing that? Because he's leading us toward a life without the usual antidotes for boredom. You know, so all the usual antidotes for boredom, you know, all the high events, all the mass gatherings and all the even certain entertainments or even drinking activities, all this got quietened. And the purpose for him to do that is to re-invite us to open our eyes, to see that the person that we should be in awe with is God himself. And so, you know, now that we cannot escape our boredom by going overseas for a breather, or we cannot gather with too many people, you know, for them to amuse us, to satisfy our loneliness, God is redirecting us to find rest and joy in Him. And so, God tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes that what? God has been telling us that all things are meaningless, but not just all things are meaningless. Only those things Everything under the sun, meaning on earth, only those under the suns, those things under the sun, those are meaningless. So let's take a look at Ecclesiastes chapter 1. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. So those of us who also have the same perspective as this blessed teacher, we are also blessed. You now then, you know, it's... It's a sign that we are awakened in our spirit. And verse 3, What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? And verse 8 is very, mean, very interesting. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing. So the eye keeps seeing a lot of things, and yet it never has enough. And the ear, nor the ear, it's full of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Everything is boring. Everything is repeating. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new? It was here already, long ago. It was here before our time. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. 
a chasing after the wind. So if you look at this Ecclesiastes, you'll realize that Ecclesiastes is painting a very gloomy picture you know, of how limited earthly things are to fulfill our, to content us, to, to give us contentment and to relieve us from our boredom. So it keeps saying, everything is meaningless under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. The eyes see a lot of nice things, a good video, good drama, good games, good scenery. But after seeing so many things, the eyes see and never get enough, never get satisfied. And so the point of all these words of the Bible is, if we are still bent on seeking excitement from the things of this world, or if we are still trying to find meaning from earthly things, then we will only remain bored. And that's why the Bible not just tells us a very gloomy, negative picture. The Bible tells us to look to, to what? To who? Look to the God who is above the sun, not under the sun. Look to the God who created the sun, who created the whole universe, not just looking at the created things under the sun and you know, try to find satisfaction from those things. And so the truth is, we honestly, sometimes we may feel really bored with our life now. You know, Sometimes we are at a season in our life where we feel like everything is the same, nothing exciting, nothing special. But even though we may feel like you know, we are so bored with our current life, God is what? God is excited. Because he knows what he is going to do in our life and through our lives. And Jesus, he promised you know, to give us abundant life. Because we know that Jesus, he, he didn't just save us from sin and hell. He also saved us from boredom. Because Jesus did not just give us salvation. He also gave us what? Life purpose. So Jesus' intention is not just to you know, just save us from hell and then uh, let us lead a very boring life on earth, trying to carry our cross and following him. He gave us life purpose. But then you ask, yes, I know I read John, you know, that Jesus said he will give us abundant life. But a question ringing in a lot of Christians' mind is what? What if, oh dear, I also find God very boring. You've been telling me, oh, I cannot find satisfaction in earthly things. It's a chasing after the wind. You know, the eyes see and never get satisfied. But what if, honestly, if I don't lie to my heart, I also find God very boring. But now we need to know, actually, feeling bored is not the worst problem. But if we stop praying, if we stop coming to church, if we stop attending cell group, if, if we stop battling Satan because we feel very bored, then that is an even worse and serious problem. So even if we do not feel like you know, praying or hearing sermon or coming to church, we still need to combat. That's why I use the word combat. We still need to fight with our heart, fight with our feeling, and do those meaningful things so that you know, eventually as we engage in a blessed environment, slowly God will revive that interest, that thrill, that awe in him. Because come to think about it, if we are not engaged in meaningful spiritual activities, what will you be doing? If today, even, even if it's true that you may find it uh, so boring to come to church on a Saturday afternoon, but seriously, if, you, if we are not here in church today, what are we likely to be engaged in? We'll be very likely doing those things that will give Satan a foothold to what? Not to bless us. The devil will not do things to bless us. We will be doing or engaging in things that give the devil a foothold to harm us. And so we really need to struggle and resist about especially feeling bored toward God because only God can give us the satisfaction that we need. But then you ask, how can we fight and struggle and try to feel not bored with God? Uh, the next thing that I want to, uh, is already shown on the screen. So the next thing is, we, we try to revive this interest in God by reviving the interest in His Word. But I know, you know, when I offer this, uh, I was telling my husband, when they see this, they'll be thinking, Che, you know, you're asking us to resist boredom with something very boring. You know, it's not as if, you know, sometimes we want to resist the boredom from work. What do we do? We go to travel in Europe, we go to the zoo, we go and watch some musical. And we try to resist something boring with something interesting. But now I'm telling you, you know, you don't want to feel bored with God, go and read his word. Wow, this is a very strange solution. So 
it is indeed true, you know, sometimes certain people, they feel like God's word really sound very boring and they are not moved by the word of God. Uh, but you have to ask, did those people really take God's word seriously? Did they really confirm God's word seriously in their life? Now, if you happen to be those people who, who are very tempted to feel that oh yeah, the Bible is the, the, the most boring book on earth that I've ever come across, if you are tempted to think that way. Now, I want to ask you to consider this. Now, a lot of people like to watch video nowadays. Uh. Now, imagine today, if we give you an assignment or if you yourself have this interest to do something. Now, today, if you want to make a video, say, for example, if today you want to make a, vi a, a YouTube video, whatever video, and your desire for this video is, I really hope my video can be watched by a million people in this world. And not just that, I really hope my video can continue to live on for thousands of years, you know, continue to be, uh, you know, live a legacy for thousands of years. Now, if you have this project in mind, what would you do? How would you design your video? What contents will you put inside this video such that it can hold people's attention for so long? And not just, you know, this video can make people want to watch it. How you must think, how, how can you make your video so attractive that people not only watch it, but they are willing to watch it again and again? You know, certain dramas we like. We, we can even watch the same drama twice or three times, you know, if the if you really like like it. But so this video that you want to make, how do you make sure that you not just have millions of views, it can go on for thousands of years and people can re-watch it and not just re-watch it? People is even willing to share and repost that video over and over again. Now, I think this is exactly what God hopes to do with the Bible. And I think God succeeded in that. You know, the Bible, it may look very plain to us, you know, it's the same old words, ancient words, but the Bible fulfilled exactly this, this, this aim. The Bible has survived thousands of years. Many people read it not just once, many times. They read it again, they still want to read it. And they don't not just read it, they also share it. And it continues to hold people's attention. So God's word may feel very boring at the onset. But as we get into it, as we get to uh, know God deeper through his words, then you realize there's indeed a lot of treasures in this holy word that we can uncover. But the problem is what? This book is so amazing. It's enough to captivate us and drive out our boredom. But our problem is what? We are not curious enough about God and His Word. And the thing about us is, we humans, we are so strange. You know, nowadays, I don't know what is your reaction when you see a viral video. I mean, I, I'm not very curious, but I think I have some basic curiosity. You know, when I see a viral video on uh, social media, being very capable, uh, I will try, try to dig the background. Why is this video so, so viral? What's the, what's the issue that, you know, make people arguing or so attracted to it? Like nowadays, I don't know, is it very viral? But uh, nowadays, I saw this BTS McDonald meal, right? I don't know. I'm not a fan of, I mean, I heard about BTS before. I'm neutral toward them. But I was thinking, what's this big deal about this purple color box and uh, this uh, cup that people can even sell so expensive? So I, I saw one or two posts and my friends were buying for their children. So I very capable. I go and dig out. I thought, you know, wow, people uh, went to so much extend to get this, maybe there's some hidden good deal behind it besides getting the nuggets and the purple color thing. So I thought maybe if you buy this, you can get uh, some photo cards of the, of the idol or what. Then I realized nothing, eh? just some nuggets and some drinks and some purple color uh, boxes. And, but at least, you know, when this thing go viral, I go and check it out. What is it about? But we humans are so strange. Why is it that the Bible the Bible clearly commanded a lot of attention over the thousands of years, far beyond you know, any hype that we have uh, come across. But yet, the strange thing is, why is it that we are not curious enough to find out what is the big deal about this Bible? Why this Bible can make people willing to die for Jesus? Why this Bible can bring about so much amazing testimony? And what is this beauty about God's Word and God Himself? So a lot of times, 
we have to be honest, it is our sinful disinterest that makes us feel that the Bible is boring. But in fact, God has a lot of treasure in this Bible. There's a lot of words of wisdom. There's a lot of secret to happiness in this Bible. And God, interestingly, you know, if you know this loving God, what did he do? He even, he even took pains to ensure what contents went into the Bible. And the contents of the Bible is so amazing. Some parts of the Bible are so simple that even kids can understand, even uneducated people can understand. So you see a lot of Bible story repeated in Sunday school. But yet at the same time, the Bible is not just a book for you know, the kids and the young and the uneducated. The Bible is also amazing enough, it's also exciting enough to trigger you know, the wisest human philosophers in the world to debate about the truth in the Bible, to arouse the interest of very qualified, very wise philosophers to think through the profound truth in the Bible. So this is so amazing. It's not just reaching the youngest, it also reach the oldest. And not just that, the Bible is not just words. It also what? It also display the power of God to transform lives. I mean, your life, my life, many people's lives have been transformed by mere words of the Bible that even textbooks cannot change. So this is an amazing book that can sanctify, it can bring people to salvation, and after bring people to salvation, it can sanctify our life. It's such an amazing book, and we always feel very bored by it. So the problem is not with God and His Word. The problem is with us. So I pray that if we are struggling with boredom, today we need to pray that God open our eyes once again to cherish, to, to understand how amazing this Word of life is and help us to get interested in His words all over again. Next, to resist boredom, to combat boredom, a thankful heart is a very important ingredient. Colossians chapter 3. Whatever you do, whether in work, uh, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And just now we read in Lamentations chapter 3 that what? God's mercies are new every morning. Now just now I mentioned we cannot combat or we cannot try to cure boredom with trivialities like you know, a, a little drama, a little game. But we need to restore a heart of thanksgiving, appreciation for seemingly trivial grace of God. I mean, usually Christians, even including Christians, sometimes secretly uh, we hope and we yearn that, God, I hope you can allow me to have some miracles in my life or some special happenings in my life, you know, so that I won't feel it's so boring. But if we know God well enough, we know that even the mundane things that we are going through is not by random because God leads us with a reason. So our boredom or our seemingly, our seeming monotony is to train us to find out or learn what is it to enjoy God in very normal, ordinary, day-to-day -day living. So boredom tells us to dig and to search what are certain grace in ordinary living? Is there anything we can give thanks to? Or are there certain new opportunities in this um, boring, seemingly boring life? So if we put in our hearts, there's, certain, there's bound to be things we can give thanks for. And a thankful heart, when you can find reasons to give thanks again, naturally you won't feel so listless and indifferent. And lastly, uh, what's most importantly is we do not just know the truth, like God's word is a truth. But in order to feel um, revived and get out of boredom, our relationship with God is not a, a relationship on paper. But we need to restore a lively and dynamic relationship with God. Now, even before we talk about relationship with God, you think about it. How can you ensure your relationship with your family with your friend, it's not boring. How? How do you do that? Uh, all of us, we have family, we have friends. You know, you want to really keep a relationship going. How do you ensure that that relationship don't fall into boredom? Naturally, you will 
spend time to talk to the person, to spend time to do things with the person, or you know, you you read their text, reply their text. In other words, you will be invested in the person's life. You will take an interest in the person's life, and you will make sure your relationship with the person is a lively and dynamic one. So, likewise, growing our relationship with God to make it interesting is the same. It includes spending time with God, talk to God, involving God in our big and small affairs in our life. You know, let God offer us some suggestion. You know, we always like to ask our our friends, "Hey, what do you think? Ah, can should I go to this school, or should I go to this? Uh, should I should I take up this job offer, etc." So in the same way, we can involve God. Let Him offer His directions. I mean, of course, when God is concerned, it's not just suggestion. We need to obey God. So God give us a direction for us to obey Him. But you know, when we talk about having a lively fellowship relationship with God, and we talk about prayers, people again, this question will pop up in their mind. Just now, I feel Bible is very boring. Likewise, I feel prayer is also very boring. Now you give me the second boring solution、uh, to revive this、um, relationship. You pray more to God. But the thing is, for those of us who think that prayer is boring, we need to reconsider how. What is the way we are praying? Are we praying with anticipation, or this praying is like a chanting? I finish chanting, I forget about it. I go carry on with my life. Or is this prayer a two-way communication or one-way one? Now, if a communication is one way, of course you will feel bored talking to the person after a while. So, when it concerns God, it can be a one-way communication in the sense where God is the one who keeps talking to us. You know, you need to do this. You need to find rest in me. God is the one who keeps talking to us, but we are the one who find Him nagging and we shut Him off. Or it can be we ourselves doing the one-way communication to God, telling God, "God, this is what I want you to do for me. This is what I hope you can give me." But we didn't spend time to examine what is God's will and heart, so it becomes a one-way communication, and of course, it becomes boring. So when we talk about、uh, life relationship, getting out of boredom, we need to get into lively communication. Like even for me and my husband, you no, know, we we don't have children. So some people say, "Wow, after getting married for many many years now,、uh, without children, isn't it boring?" I mean, of course, we don't have the children to add sparks to our relationship, but it's not so boring because we have different things to talk about every day. You know, after being married for about eight years,、uh, up to now, we still have this mandatory good night kiss. But we know that after a while, this thing cannot. Grow the relationship because after so many years, this good night kiss become like a habit, where whether you have to feel or not, you just kiss or bye bye sleep. But in order to grow the relationship, we need ongoing, lively communication. So in the same way,、uh, this habitual good night kiss is like our morning and night prayer with God. I mean, it is a basic connection. You know, some people say, "Ah, yeah, you know, I only pray in the morning and at night to God." It becomes very ritual, very routine, very habitual. There's no fun, very boring. I mean. But even though it's boring, it's still needed to do. At least it's a basic connection. But what truly matters is the in between throughout the day. How do you talk to God? How do you bring God into the picture? You know, throughout the day, you know, as you encounter some people,、uh, how do you、um, let God guide us? You know, God, today what should I eat? Today what should I tell the person? You know, sometimes. After being a Christian for more than thirty years, why is it that I still find prayer so interesting? Because I include God in my everything. I ask God, "What should I eat?" You no, know, if I have some pockets of time, I ask God. You know, now God, I have some time. Who should I text? You know, there's so many people that、I、can text. Who should I text? What should I say? Or you know, I I'm supposed to preach this coming weekend. What is the topic? Please give me so I can involve God in a lot of the in between things and hearing God's answer. Then it won't be bored. Now I know of a couple, very interesting. You know, this couple,、uh, the husband and the wife are in two different countries. The husband has to work in overseas. The wife is in Singapore. So usually, you know, for this kind of long distance communication, you will imagine that you know they will just have uh, some uh, one or two, you know, Skype call, video calls, and that's it, right? But I noticed this couple very interesting. The wife like to do one thing. The the wife like to video call the husband, 
And then, and then just put the phone there. And while she continues to eat and talk to the rest of us in the dinner table, then the husband, the, the screen is still on, put there at the dinner table, staring at all of us eating. <laughs> and then, and then he is also eating. Maybe he's also doing his own thing. Sometimes he watch TV also. And then, and also this wife, interestingly, when we watch TV, this wife again on the video call, face the video toward the TV, sit it on the sofa like a person, <laughs> and then. And then we watched the TV. Then they were like not really talking in any communication, but one in a, once in a while they will comment on the TV. You know, hey, why this person like that? Why that person like that? So actually, what the wife is doing, you know, at first I told my husband this is very interesting. They just on the the video call, put it. You know, everybody, both of them do their own things. You know, whatever they are doing. Sometimes the wife even take a shower and leave it there, and then uh, and then after that come out again, and then the the video is still there. So what? The wife is doing. He, he. I, I. Of course, I believe it's not all that they are doing. But one thing that um, aroused my curiosity before I saw all these little things is, I always wonder. Hey, this husband is away for two or three years. Why is it that this um, couple, their love is still very strong and intimate? Why? After that, I saw all these things. I understood. Oh, even though the husband is like very far away. But the wife is bring the husband into her daily life, not just in a uh, intensive one or two hour video call. Every little thing, watch TV, uh, eat dinner, talking to whoever. The husband is there. He knows everything the wife is doing. The wife also know everything the husband is doing, and so it's not boring. So what I'm saying is, why do we find God boring? Because we tend to put God. In the Bible, lock God in the Bible. Oh God, you can only be found in the Bible. Or we lock God in the church. Now after we are done with church, oh, okay, I'm done with God. You know, today I prayed five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night. I've come to church. You know, at least I can uh, answer to pastor, or I have, uh, or can answer to my parents. Or I've read my Bible for five minutes, and then we lock God in the Bible. We lock God in the church. Then after that, we think God is so boring. Every day say the same thing. But you just imagine. If you are the wife just now, you involve God in every little thing. You really treat God like a living person, not a dead person. I mean, the wife, why she did that to her husband? Because she know that my husband is only far away in another country. He's not dead. He's living. No, if he's living, he can participate in my life. And so, if we really recognize that God is a living person, He is our living companion. Living friend, living master, living lover. Then, of course, and if we involve God in every little nitty gritties of our life, then how can we be bored with Him? How can we feel that our life is meaningless and joyless? So, we need to work on our lively and dynamic relationship with God. You know, ask God to open our eyes. You know, everything that we are doing, ask God to give us the wisdom to deal. Deal with the mundane things of life. Give us the passion and the creativity to go through the routine things of life. Ask God to open our eyes to see if there's any potential people we can share the good news with. And so this is one thing we need to work on. God didn't give us. God didn't leave us without a solution. It's a matter of whether we want to involve God. So actually, you know, we humans we are very strange. On the one hand, we are we don't like. Boredom. We are sick of monotony, right? We don't like monotony. The same old things will wear us down. Same people, same routine, same things. But yet, at the same time, we are very strange in the sense we also do not like new things to disrupt our normal peace, right? And that's what a lot of people during this pandemic, what they have been hoping for is. How I wish I can get back my previous normal life. So you see, we humans very strange. We normal life, we feel very bored. When this normal life is taken away from us, we say, "How I wish I can go back to my previous normal, boring life." So the thing is, if we know the truth, we need to understand that when God allows certain things to repeat, it is surely not to bore us. In fact. It is the daily, repeated, consistent thing that build up our life and our relationship with God. So it is you know, our usual prayer, Bible reading, weekly church, weekly cell group. It is all these seemingly mundane, routine things that actually keep us going. It actually make our spirit survive and flourish. 
So in God's hand, under God's guidance, it doesn't mean that repeated things, repeated things are purposeless. It also doesn't mean that ordinary things are not important. And familiar things also should not be treated with contempt. Because whatever we are doing, if we are doing for God, everything is purposeful. And it brings us back to who we are, our identity. So if we, are, if we belong to God, then it means that we are not just living under the sun. But if we belong to God, what, really, what, re what that really means is we are in fact using our seemingly very ordinary today to prepare for the eternal kingdom. And from that perspective, then you realize that your today, even though your today look very normal, it is, it is gloriously special because our today is spent not for nothing. Our today is spent so that we can be ready for the eternal kingdom when we meet God again. So I pray that God can cure us of our boredom and God can make us captivated by him all over again. And so with this, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for reminding us that indeed we are not designed for boredom. And things of the world may thrill us and amuse us for a little while, but we know that if we put our hopes there, we will be brought back to boredom again. So Lord, we pray that you touch our hearts again. You make us be able to get captivated by you again. Lord, there are things that blind our eyes. But the thing is, if we keep fixing our eyes on earthly things, we will see and not get enough. So Lord, we pray that we will not go on a wild goose chase, but we will come and realize how beautiful, how glorious, how awesome you are. So Lord, thank you for loving us. And right now, as we want to prepare our hearts for the Holy Communion, Lord, please, give, please cleanse us and draw our attention to you. And I pray all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.